What's going on my friends? Welcome to another video. My name is Bijan in case anyone is new here and in this video we're going to be going over another trade recap here. Just a quick one. I'm going to try and get into it a little more in detail uh, but still try and keep it a quick lesson for you guys here. So we're going to be going over a trade that I did on Snapchat. We made a $3,361 profit today on it and we were trading shares. I shorted the shares on this trade and we're going to talk about I'll touch base on why I was even watching this and then I'll, I'll touch base on like how I kind of formulated the plan and all that and we'll talk about what I did and that's pretty much that. So let's jump into it here. So we had a $3,361 profit as I mentioned. I was trading stock shares and I shorted the shares. Shorting the shares means you make money when the stock goes down. So basically... I shorted the shares up here right around this 40 area as I basically saw him struggling with it, not really able to hold above it or anything like that. Uh, just basically, basically kind of broke right through it. Now, I shorted the shares, which basically means I borrowed the shares and I sold them to the market in hopes of the stock going down so that I can buy the shares back at a lower price and I get to keep the difference there. And then, of course, I return the shares to the broker that I borrowed them from. Obviously, that's all the technicalities that don't really matter. Now, if anyone is confused on the idea of shorting shares, I'll have a cool little example for you guys at the end of the video. Uh, I just want to make sure that I don't bore anybody here and make sure I kind of get across the main details for you guys. So I shorted 2,000 shares of Snapchat here right at the 39.94 area. I closed half of the trade right around the 38.50. I was out at 38.77. We'll go over the exact uh, fills in a moment here. And then the rest of the trade, I closed out down here right around the 37.50 uh, area. It was 37.70 something. We'll go over it right now. Uh, now, before we get into the exact breakdown of all the uh, fills and everything here, let me kind of touch base on where this trade idea came from in the first place. So this idea, it was on the watch list, but it was actually on the watch list as a long play, as a bounce play here. Now, on the watch list, what I had mentioned is, and I know this is, it's, it's trust me, we're going to get to something here. On the watch list, I basically said, I want to see the stock gap down and wash out to the 3750 area for us to get either long shares or get some calls for a bounce play. That's what I was mainly watching for. So I came into the market hoping that Snapchat was gapping down and washing out to the 3750 area. I was even hoping it was gapping below the 40 area. Now, it gapped right to that 40 area. Now, the reason why, because I know someone's going to say, okay, well, dude, I get it. It was on your watch list, but like, why was it even on your watch list? The reason that it was on my watch list is because every night I run a certain type of scan, if you will, based on, for example, all of my students are going to know exactly what I'm going to talk about here. I don't even have to say it. And I kind of like that because, it, you know, it's kind of like a rewarding feeling to know. It's like, yeah, dude, I, I get it. I understand. That's, that's cool. I see it actually working out in play here. So basically I scan for certain things and, and I don't want to get too much into it here. This is the hard part because of the fact that if I say something in this YouTube video, someone's going to take it and run with it and think, oh, that's all I have to do. That's the only thing that goes into it. No, it's not that there's quite a few things that go into it. I have like three videos that break down like specific lessons that explain like, hey, this is what we're looking for when we're looking for the stock to trade. Then this is what we're doing when we're trying to execute the trade and, and things like that. So uh, this specific tra strategy, I'm not going to get too deep into it here, but basically I'm looking for something that was down dramatically the day before, a certain amount the day before at least. Then I want it to just completely gap down and flush out of the open to a nice key area to catch a bounce play. So this basically aligned with almost everything in that specific strategy. Now, again, I would love to get down and de to the details of it here for you guys, but it wouldn't be fair to my students if I'm over there teaching them and all that. And then all of a sudden I go here on YouTube and say, yeah, hey, here how it is. But I, I mean, come on, guys. I mean, I, I, I don't know how much more I can get with these hints to you. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best here without literally, you know, shoving the spoon in your mouth. So um, anyways, that's where it was on my watch list. I wanted a gap down and a wash out to the 3750 area to get long. And lo and behold, look at what happened it, it, right around that 3750 area. 
So, why did I short it? The main reason I shorted it is because of the fact that this is one of the things that was one of the main watches that I was watching, and I knew this is going to kind of teach you guys as well how you can kind of adjust your trades as long as they go according to your strategies. So I knew that based on one of my strategies, I was expecting the stock to go down to 37.50 anyways. So once I saw that it was already losing this 40 support area, key level area, psychological area, whole dollar mark, whatever you want to call it, however you want to abide by it, everyone likes to use different terms, that's where I got into the trade. I shorted the shares. I basically sold 2,000 shares that I don't own. I didn't own the shares. I was borrowing them, shorting. That's what shorting is. And again, I'll give a little example at the end of the video. Uh, it'll be a brief, brief one. And if you want more of an example, I'll make another one for that. Um, actually, yeah, I'll make a separate one if you guys want. Comment down below, please. Let me know if you would like an actual like separate because it'll be a little bit longer. I'm going to make this video like 30 minutes if I try and explain that at the end. I, already, I can already tell. But comment down below if you would like a video explaining what shorting is and how it works. Uh, I, I have a good example that I always give to people and no one's ever been confused by it. So let me know. Comment down below if that's something you want to learn about and, and I'll do it. I just don't want to do it and over here seem like, oh, I'm such a cool guy trying to teach people about shorting. And they're like, dude, why are you even wasting our time putting a YouTube video about that out, you know? So anyways, this is me rambling. I'm sorry, guys. You know, I had to let it out a little bit. So long story short, let me just kind of wrap it up before I give you guys my whole life story here. Um, I shorted the shares as I saw it struggling with that 40 area, breaking below that 40 area. I got my fill. For 2,000 shares, don't worry about why it's kind of broken up here in, in two different orders. It's at the same time, 633, 42, 39.94. Uh, I shorted 2,000 shares. And as the stock went down, I bought 1,000 shares. I know it looks all broken up here. It's all around the same time here. Took a little bit to fill some of them. Uh, when I placed the order, I, uh, only a few went through, and then I had to sit on it for like 10 seconds for the rest to go through, which, again, you don't need to be panicking here, guys. No need to panic out or anything. You go just place your orders, do what you got to do, and that's fine. Anyways, uh, I'm just trying to trade recap here. I got to remind myself I'm not trying to teach you guys everything here. So I was in it at 39.94. I sold half of it, 1,000. I'm sorry, I didn't sell. I bought. Because that's the opposite. When you're shorting shares, to close the trade, you buy back. When you're normal trading, longing the shares, you're buying the shares to open the trade, and then you're selling it to close the trade. In this scenario, I sold the shares to open the trade at $39.94, and then I bought back 1,000 shares at $38.77. So I was at a profit of about... I would say $2,300 right there. That's a dollar and 17 cent difference from my entry price. Now, this is going to be an easy calculation. A dollar and 17 cents, you have a thousand shares, that's $1,170 that I locked in there. I know I had 2,000 shares, but I only locked in 1,000 right there. So we're going to do a little kind of like a, 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 running calculation, if you will, here. So $1,170 is what I locked in right here. And I still had half of the trade. I still had another thousand shares. The rest of the shares, keep in mind, just take note, write it down. If you're one of those people that are really into this stuff, write it down. 1,170 was the first batch of the profit on this trade, if you will. Then we bought back, we closed the rest, we covered the rest, the 1,000, the final 1,000 at 37.75, we'll say, because it's kind of like a random number there. 37.75. So 37.75 from the entry price of 39.94 is $2.19. We bought back, we closed, we covered 1,000 shares at a profit of 219 each. So what is that? That's $2,190 profit there. So add that 
$190 profit to the initial $1,170 profit. And that's how you get the $3,360 profit. And that $1.30 is probably from that random, you know, partial of a cent there. Uh, however you want to account for that. And that's pretty much how the trade went down calculation wise. So I'm going to do just a real quick recap now running through it like a 30 second recap. Hopefully I can do it in 30 seconds. We'll see. I was in the trade at 633. Basically, I had already been expecting the stock to go down to the 3750 area for me to catch it for a bounce play. Because I saw that, all right, we got a little bit of room to go. Let me catch it for the short side. Now, I could have caught it on the long side as well, but I didn't want to overtrade. I was already in it. I said, all right, we're good. We're fine. And it was already at the midpoint of the day. I said, I didn't really want to waste time chopping around. And I also had a few things to do during the day. I didn't really want to worry about it, considering the fact that I had already gotten into the trade, uh, used a decent amount of capital on the trade. Uh, and that's, that's basically the main reason why, but otherwise it could have, it still could be definitely in play. I might even watch it to see if it can give another dip to that 3750 area, you know, tomorrow we'll see what it does with it. I might even play it again. Who knows? Um, that's besides the fact we're not here to talk about that. So just kind of going over again, 633, that's where I shorted the shares. I got into the trade, shorted 2000 shares at 637 647 about 15 minutes later we'll say i closed out i bought back 1000 shares for about a profit of 1170 and then the final 1000 shares i closed out right at eight o'clock right here for an additional profit of 2190 giving me a total profit of the 3000 361. Uh, and that's pretty much that, guys. So like I said, this was something that was on the watch list. You could have played it either way. Uh, even in the watch list, I said that I would like for it to ideally gap down and give us a washout to that 3750 area. I said if we hold above that 40 area, we might be able to get long. Uh, but I mean, as soon as I saw that it was struggling with that 40 area, it didn't even really give it a chance. Uh, that's when I started shorting, got into the trade there, because like I said, I was already expecting it to go down to the 3750 area. And that's also the reason why I closed out the rest of the trade at that 3750 area is because that was my plan. Technically, I wanted to buy shares at 3750. That's kind of what I did. If you think about it, I just shorted them first. So anyways, just wanted to give you guys a few different perspectives of looking at this. And if you are still here again, remember, comment down below if you do want to hear about the uh, shorting example. And just a little heads up, if anyone is interested in the watch list service that I've been mentioning or that I do offer, I've actually decided to offer a trial offer for it just for the month of November. This is the first time that I decided to do this. Uh, and again, I, I don't think I'll be doing it again in the future. At least I don't plan on it. I just wanted to kind of try it out. Some people had been asking me, a lot of people had been asking about it. So I said, you know what, let me give it a try. Let people try it out. Uh, so far it's been going pretty well, been getting some good feedback. So I'll put a link in the description down below. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up. Apparently it helps us out a lot. Subscribe if you're new, put the notifications on, and I will talk to you guys in the next video.